Hello everyone, SD and with me Shubham from Blender File and this is the node concept and today we are having last texture which is the point density texture and this was introduced in 2.75 and it's really awesome but it makes your system really slow and it takes a lot of time to render so anyways we'll be discussing this and it needs a simple you know not simple it needs quite a, quite a scene setup so what a uh, point density does is uh, it takes an object and uses that as the density for uh, scattering the volume of a given object so for example uh, if we have uh, this and uh, let's see hmm. oh front view with that oh. and grab this thing. So uh, change this to the node editor and uh, <coughs> sorry, add in texture and point density. Ooh, so uh, it's quite a big node and uh, yeah. So it has a color output and a density output. So color is usually giving a black color. I don't know why, but what we are to use is this density and yeah, it is actually working with the volume. So we don't need a diffuse. It won't work you need is a volume scatter node and it should be connected to the volume and then if I change uh, select and drag this to density and I'm dragging in a border and first thing first uh, before we get anything out there to see you can see there's nothing that is because we have not selected the object so uh, firstly uh, there are two types of systems so you can choose either object vertices and is a particle system so firstly we'll be working on with the object vertices so what it does is it takes the vertices of the object so for example we have the monkey over here and we'll be using the vertexes of the monkeys to be used as the point to be you know used as the density so uh, so go to object vertices from here and select object and then boom now if we press shift that boom we have our black monkey so why is it black because we don't have a light in our thing so let's just add in um mm. let's add an aerial <laughs> this time uh just for fun <laughs> so we'll just keep it like that over here and like that so boom <laughs> there it is so now you can see nice looking colors over there so uh, the object is whichever object you want to get your density inside the cube as. So yeah, you can just play around with that. Boom. Then there is this object space. So which is actually world or uh, I mean space selection, which is object or world. So in object selection, object space, uh, the object will be uh, automatically treated as a part inside the cube and then it will give the density but if you change this to the world space now wherever your monkey is inside the cube only that much portion will be visible and you know you cannot see the volume because the monkey is also visible to the camera so you just go over here to the objects uh, panel and go down here and hide this and hide this as well go to the cycle settings and choose a camera so I mean unchoose camera so it will hide the Suzanne from the view of the camera so but it will be treated over there so yeah, see you over here and it is not working why why is it not working what did I do oh yes uh, sorry <laughs> okay so that thing boom now if you see boom there it is so the part which is inside the cube is only showing the density from the Suzanne and the rest part is invisible so that is what you know world space and object space does so you know object space just go over there out boom looks nice so that is what object space and um, what's that world space does next is radius so radius it is actually controlling uh, the amount of radius around the vertex that is to be used for you know showing the density so if we bring this down very low something like 0 0.01 it 
you can see very minor spots over there, like, you know, dot. It looks like fireflies, but it is actually, I don't know, the density over there. So, uh, if you just increase that, it shows me like 1.6. Now you can see a small circle of dots around there. And I'm not increasing the sample very much because, you know, it will slow down the system a lot. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I can't. I'm also, you know, recording a tutorial, so. But I might uh, go a little bit up just for this one, and let's just go to 20 away. So, boom, now you can see, you know, density is quite nice, building up around the vertex over there, and let's just get back to... Alright, so uh, I just increased that to 0.1, and uh, it will keep increasing the density. So, you know, the default 0.2 is quite nice, and 0.3. Yeah, whatever that is, point two was also looking nice. So, uh, whatever, uh, it looks nice by default, and you can use down by that. And next thing is the interpolation. So, uh, it won't, uh, you know, show much of a difference, but what it actually does is uh, controls the, you know, smoothness of the density. So, uh, closest. Closest, huh? So closest uh, interpolation, it makes them, you know, like cubish, so very sharp looking, then uh, sharp looking points around there, but you won't be not, uh, noticing any difference, so, uh, I don't know, it's very hard to notice the difference, uh, but, you know, you just play around with whatever it is, or you can just leave it default, and next is linear, it makes them a little more smoother, and uh, that looks nice-ish, and finally, the uh, cubic, it makes them completely, I mean, like, more smoother and curved uh, than the linear. So, yeah, that's how it works. And, yeah, the cubic is, cannot be rendered by GPU. It can only be rendered by CPU, but uh, I won't be showing you uh, it's this on CPU because that will crash my blender, something like that will go really slow so I won't be showing you that just uh, leave it as it is so yeah it won't be making much of a difference so oh linear was default anyways <laughs> so uh, next is the resolution so it actually is kind of uh, the you know like when you render and make you increase the samples and this is kind of the samples for the density so the more the sample is the better detailed uh, you know, dots you will be finding over there, so the mesh will be more uh, understandable because, you know, right now you can't understand what is going on over here. That's thing, so, you know, like a resolution of something like very low, <laughs> that makes it <laughs> like a cross or something weird. And if you increase it like 150, so you can see more details over here, so it actually controls the details over here, and that's basically what resolution does. So this default again and next is the particle system so I won't be needing this thing again let's add in a mesh and plane and grab this up over here and go to the particle system add in a new particle and that's it so you press control I mean alt a that will release the particles and whichever particle is there inside this uh, cube will only be visible uh, with the you know density so right now you can see there is nothing but that is because we have not selected the particle system yet so this time we'll be using the particle system and it gives you some more stuff over here but basically everything is the same so you select the object which is plane in this case and it has a particle system you just choose that particle system over there and boom there it is so we have our you know, cloud looking thing over here <laughs> so that's uh, now every single hollow over here you know these points that you see over here, um, where is that? Yeah, there it is. So every dot over here is actually having its own radius, so which is controlled by this, and which is getting affected, and it's making them, you know, it's using that as a density for the density what the volume scatter. So that's how it works. And then there is the interpolation, same stuff, and space and same as well so you just change that to world it won't be affecting uh, i mean it is affecting but you know, whichever thing is inside of there just play around with that and things like that so yeah that's 
basically it. So I just grab that one over here again. And I'll take this turn. Boom, some of that. Okay, so here we can see it again and let's change it back to Jeff's face. So put her right there. Okay, uh yes, I got something. So you just uh, use the world space instead because you know in world space only the particles are getting treated. Yeah, uh, I mean, which are inside the cube, but if you choose it to be, you know, uh, object space, everything is trying to get fit inside the cube, and that makes them, you know, scale on the z-axis, that makes them more of flat than circular, so you better use the world space over here, in this case, and yeah, that looks nice. Lastly is uh, the new thing, which is the color source, so it affects uh, the you know, the color which is over here, so um, there are three color sources, which is particle velocity, particle speed, and particle age. So, you know, uh, the color source doesn't actually mean it is affecting the colors, but what it is doing is actually uh, controlling the amount of density it will affect. So, particle age, uh, that means uh, the age of the particle, which is something over here, um, for example, the lifetime, which is like 50, if I make them to 15, so the particles which are almost dead are going to, you know, give you a smaller density than particles which are, you know, uh, born just that frame. So, uh, you can see over here, so uh, this is giving a lesser dense cloud and particles which are over here are having more dense color away so you know it's almost faded to the background but it is quite prominent and visible so that's what particle age does the speed actually depends upon the speed how fast a particle is falling yes yeah, so uh, the faster it is uh, the more it will be prominent and the slower it is the lesser it will be visible so that's what particle speed does and finally is the particle velocity huh pretty much same, just velocity is also taking into consideration a direction of the particle, so that's basically, that's different between them, so most of the times you won't see much quite difference. So yes, um, that's quite it for the point density, really awesome note to play around with, yeah, it also has a vector input, just in case you need something, yeah, but you know, it was quite well without that as well so yeah that is uh, basically the point density node and uh, oh we have completed all the textures finally yay and uh, so yeah other than these two things over here so this is basically you know having a mesh texture and um, let's see over here And uh, B. <laughs> so, like so uh, it is basically like that. Yeah. So image sequence does the same stuff. You can you know, select. Oops, where is that? So ah, come on. Texture image sequence, some of like that, and you can just select these things. It will add in same stuff. So you can see that. So image texture, image texture. So that's basically you know covered in the image texture tutorial back then. <laughs> so you can just look back over over there. And uh, next we'll be starting on with the colors, so these are really awesome and, yeah, awesome, <laughs> nothing much. And uh, so, yeah, I hope you learned something and uh, subscribe to stay tuned to watch our next tutorials on the colors. And you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash blenderfile and uh, we hope to see you in our next tutorial. Bye!